It started with my daughter, who sent me a book. The subject was molecular nanotechnology, and it drew from Richard Feynman, who said, as a physicist, that it would be possible to select atoms to develop into assemblers, which could replicate themselves by the millions, who will take elements of bulk material and build. The cost would be practically nothing because the elements for this materials were taken from water, from air, and from earth. Dirt free and no use of la labor whatsoever. No factories. Imagine how cheap it would be. We're dealing with materials 50 times the strength of steel, of pure carbon. Design your own materials. It won't be wood, stone, and glass anymore. They'll all be devised for your own use. So anyway, this started my thinking. How could this be used in architecture? Having been trained to examine and understand what building technology you're working with would allow me to move into this area and know from physicists what is possible. Not me, I'm just a, an architect. I don't have any illusions as to what it might be. I listen to them. They say, you can do this, you can do that in this particular way. Uh, then I say, on the strength of that, so I've devised six projects as an exhortation to the younger generations. A community is a community not only of many occupants, but a community of different building types. In the center, you would suggest a large space like Grand Central Station for particular assembly and uses. You would see dwellings in, in towers. You could see underground developments. And left in this picture still are the vats from which uh, these uh, grow. So specialized building types requires each one of them a separate code. Here then is a distribution system with three entrance points. You see the bottom and two at the top. At the right would show you a growth center with chemicals in them, but each color would represent a different code. The yellow code on the left would produce Grand Central Station. The one on the right in green would predate something else. And so the growth of these different buildings side by side uh, of different uh, design altogether. And then the apartments in the interior can be changed. The partitions can be moved. Uh, any of the decor or decoration can be changed at will. So these can be personalized apartments. I'll give you some idea of how very different building will be. This is then the Chapel to the Sun, which is designed by Morphability to have its petals open and close in response to light. People giving it a sense of scale. There you see an elevator going up. If you have some reservation about my design, just comfort yourself by saying 
in the next generations there will be other architects more talented than I am and more knowledgeable about the growing technology. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, who was a French Jesuit and a humanist, reminded us ours is a generation increasingly responsible for our own evolution. We are in a position to copy nature, to build in certain ways and change our life here on this earth and change uh, dramatically the earth itself. This is a frightening thing to remind us of, but it's only realistic that if I offer this and suggest that we will have vast changes of this magnitude in the future, we have to take on a moral responsibility. Now we'll go on here just for the last view of this. The Sun Chapel. This is a morphable structure responding to light energy, following the passage of the day, celebrating the sun, the source of all life and earth. This is very religious in its terms, that we are celebrating light itself. Our universe is 90% light. We then are celebrating not some transcendent God image, but the cosmic enterprise, the creation itself, of which each of us are part. Thank you.